Africa, climate, and vegetation. So the main things that influence climate are the distance from the equator, the elevation above sea level, and the different rainfall patterns that occur, uh, mainly due to monsoons. The distance from the equator is important, and most of Africa is a part of the tropic zone from here to here. It's Tropic of Cancer, this is Tropic of Capricorn, most of it is here, is in this tropic zone. It's temperate to the north and to the south, and the equator is right there. This means it gets lots of sun all year round, and uh, the other areas, the temperate zones, they have more real seasons. And higher elevations are cooler, and this picture shows that. This is Mount Kilimanjaro in the background, and it does snow year round, even though there's drafts close to the bottom of it. Now, Ethiopia is cooler because it's higher up in elevation, and it gets more rain due to something called the rain shadow effect because uh, moisture cannot be held in the clouds when it goes over a higher area. And that makes means that irrigation is uh, relatively unnecessary in most cases. Now, Somalia is lower, and so it's hotter, and things can only really grow around the coastline or around the oasis, so this area here. In terms of rainfall, the uh, rain patterns generally, I think, are about, they normally go from this direction to that direction in the, uh, in the summertime and the other way around from this direction to that direction. So you see uh, this particularly uh, prevalent or important in places like Madagascar where it, where it gets a lot of rain in the winter. And this would be an example of a monsoon pattern. Now, farmers and rain, farmers in dry regions can have a much harder time because they can only grow one crop. Farmers in wet regions can grow more than one, but the crops they can grow is all, are also affected. About 20% of uh, rainforest is um, is what Africa is. So uh, the savanna is this area here, this lighter green area. Now, the savanna is what we think about when we think about most of the places in Africa where the wild animals are. Deserts are to the north up here and to the south down here. And the Sahel is this kind of border region between the desert and the grasslands. Rainforest, uh, as, as I said in the previous slide, about 20% of Africa, but it is shrinking at a relatively rapid pace. That is a problem. But if you look, uh, yes, a cute gorilla, a uh, lowland gorilla, I think it is. Savannah, as I said, uh, that's what you think about primarily, and that's that uh, that beige area, large portion of Africa. Deserts also a large portion of Africa, um, and that is something where uh, they are expanding through the process of what's called desertification. Now, the only people who really live in the desert are the people who are nomads who travel set routes according to the seasons and find grazing areas for their goats and camels and sheep. Obviously, you can't graze in the desert, but you can pass through in there. Uh, it's very particular routes that they take. Uh, sleeping sickness and malaria go ahead and sicken millions each year. Huge cost and the amount of people killed. Malaria is spread by mosquitoes, which thrive in swampy sort of environments. Sleeping sickness also survives in a lot of those areas too. It's a map where it shows the, the dark red areas where malaria is prevalent, and the dark blue areas where where, uh, and uh, sleeping sickness is a horrible disease, just like malaria, but, um, and it's something that doesn't get as much press, but a uh, major, major problem in a lot of places in Africa. And we are done.